So recently a wave of articles went around mentioning a Jaws remake was in the works. I'm probably a bit late at addressing this issue, however this isn't the first time news of a Jaws remake went around and was ultimately proven not to be the case, but that being said, there will be another time articles will circulate of a reboot being in the works, and also the genuine looming threat that it will become a reality. But until then I wanted to make a discussion video on why a Jaws remake should never be made. Not only is the original a cultural phenomenon, it's also a perfect time capsule in filmmaking history. It started with an effective horror novel that just needed the right up and coming director to take on the the film project and make it right. It's one of my favourite movies and it's easy to just say don't make a remake because it'll be bad. A remake will be bad for a multitude of reasons. Over the past few decades we have seen countless remake after remake that is purely made for brand recognition but ultimately was a pathetic attempt to recapture the magic that made the original great. And there's probably a reason why Jaws hasn't been remade yet. God knows it ran its own franchise into the ground and is also surrounded by countless ripoffs that have followed. But this is something that's been in the back of my head for a while now and I just wanted to get it all out in the video. So let's get started. So, the book that the movie is based on is a product of the time. It was more a novel about a terrifying man-eater rather than anything factual about real sharks. But that's not a judgement on the book or Peter Benchley at all. It's a scary story. My point is, trying to remake this story in this day and age after all the research and science we now know about sharks is a bit redundant. Like sure, you can make a movie today about a killer shark eating people, but when it's a remake of a cultural phenomenon such as Jaws, you just can't tell the same story again. One fact of being shark don't actually like the taste of humans. Like sure, may eat people in shallow waters or they go swimming in the ocean, but in terms of stalking three people on a boat, yeah great white sharks wouldn't give a shit when there's fish and seals out there. The best weapon in the original Jaws movie was the fear of the unknown, and now sharks are very well known. Peter Benchley has been in numerous shark documentaries and even admitted later in his career that if he had the knowledge of sharks that he does now back then when he wrote the Jaws novel, he would never have written it. This is just my own personal little vendetta. I'm all for horror movies with real life dangerous animals killing people, but if you're fascinated by sharks or crocodiles or snakes or cassowaries, then there are ways to portray them in horror films that keep them both terrifying and realistic. When animals like that kill people in real life, it's scary because it's 100% possible if you're not careful. But something that's unavoidable at this point, now that CGI lets you do anything, a remake wouldn't work because of my next point. One of my biggest pet peeves in this day and age, especially when the killer animal is mostly CGI, is that they add too much unbelievable motivation to eat or kill the human characters. Now granted, as I said before with the shark from Jaws, it's unrealistic of a shark to stalk three people on a boat that are trying to kill it back. But that's what's left over from the Moby Dick inspirations from the book. But I will also argue that the movie is about the characters and how they all change as people towards the end, except for Quint. It's a story very much about a community on an island dealing with a crisis, and a city chief of police who was afraid to go in the water. And with a shark comes your different types of experts, a master shark hunting fisherman and an oceanographer who loves studying sharks. But outside of that, the actual portrayal of the shark is completely natural. Eating swimmers on the beach, and on top of that the animatronic moves naturally, the stock footage of the real sharks helps sell you on it being real, and the POV shots aren't crazy fast. But what I've noticed these days with killer animal movies, the monsters want to kill the humans like they hate them. The scariest part about dangerous animals is when you go into their element and they just do their thing. But thanks to CGI letting you do whatever you want, it now shows too much. Like when you learn that snakes, especially anacondas, eat something, they're like done for a while. They're like mate, that was a mad feed gonna go have a nap for a month. And so, in the movie Anaconda, once it eats someone, it'll be done for a while. But this Anaconda is so desperate to eat all the humans, eats one, then two, nah, they all go to die. I'm aware that there are two Anacondas in the movie Anaconda, but my point still stands. Don't at me. This is now starting to get into my next topic. Probably one of the most effective elements of this movie came from the animatronic shark malfunctioning constantly. One of the best and oldest horror movie tropes is the POV of the threat. And the POV of the shark mixed with John Williams score followed by the audience filling in the blanks somehow wonderfully made such a terrifying experience. But obviously now that we're living in a CGI does everything world, as much as the shark in the original nowadays looks dated to me personally, a shot like this where the prop shark is swimming past the boat, yeah the shark isn't swimming at all, it's just on a rail system and it's sort of like light lifelessly moving forward. This shot is still compelling because that is a massive animatronic shark in the real ocean and in this frame they have captured it along with the boat and our characters. It's all real. But now, 
Oh god, now. Even Spielberg once threatened that he would have ruined the original movie if CGI was around in 1974, showing the shark any chance he could. Nowadays, the shark jumping onto the boat would be done so much bigger and detailed with CGI. In fact, it would look exactly like this. Why wouldn't the boat just break under its weight, or even support its weight? Why would the boat roll over after the sharks jumped off? Oh, uh, uh, anyway. I think the only decent CGI shark I've seen in a movie recently was probably from The Shallows. But even then, that movie just adds too much personal motivation from the shark. If she stays on the rock all day, the shark's gonna move on. There's other shit to eat. And yeah, I don't know, sharks are a hard one to get right with CGI. It's like the uncanny valley thing. Movies these days always make the sharks move way too fast in an instant than they can in real life. And for someone like me, I just get sucked out of it completely. My second favourite shark movie aside from Jaws, which is, now just fucking relax when you hear this one, is Deep Blue Sea. But my actual pros that I take away from that movie are the practical sharks. They look amazing and much better than the one in Jaws. In terms of making a shark film just as good as Jaws, the animatronics were on point. However, that movie came out when CGI was changing filmmaking forever, and to an extent ruining filmmaking forever. The whole now we can do whatever we want in movies shows when the CGI sharks do not match the practical sharks at all. Where the animatronics have the actual natural movements of the shark, once it cuts to the CGI one, it's like they just move too fast. Where the original Jaws had the useful combination of POV in the water, an animatronic shark puppet, as well as footage of real great white sharks filmed in Australia. In a Jaws remake, you can just imagine how much you'll see it now. Now the shark will do acrobatics in the air every time it eats someone. Following the massive success of the original Jaws, it wasn't met without its instant rip-offs. But those are movies ripping off of Jaws specifically. Something that has risen in the last few decades. Bad movies made bad on purpose. Featuring sharks. Shark to puss, mega shark versus everything. But I think Sharknado takes the prize of replacing the fear of sharks with dumb, dumb on purpose. The original Jaws made people afraid to go to the beach for decades. Now the twist is shark movies have just become a massive joke. And as I said before, CGI sharks in bigger budgeted films are to an extent passable, but CGI sharks in a low budget film is just the worst. And the worst of both worlds were met recently with The Meg. Some of the worst CGI I've ever seen in a high budget movie. Gravity, physics, logic. Screw all that nerd crap. Everyone wanted to see a Megalodon movie. The biggest shark to ever walk the water. But nah, rather than portraying its size realistically, making it not just another threat for an individual human, let's just have it move super fast. So fast! Because it hates Jason Statham. Look at it go! In this political climate, one of the greatest aspects of the original is what will be the most problematic in this day and age. The inner conflict and overall dick measuring from all the characters on the boat adds its own tension to hunting a killer shark. One of my favourite aspects is two of the characters are absolute experts in their field, but also they're toxic dicks. Quint is a master fisherman and shark hunter leading the expedition, but he's also a massive alpha prick with disdain for Hooper being a squeaky clean city boy. Hooper is a professional oceanographer, expert in his field with the financial backing of his own equipment and technology, but he's also an uptight college boy who's constantly clashing with Quint over his outdated views on marine life. Chief Brody is a grizzled experienced city cop who has a fear of the ocean and he tries to keep it bottled up. His main focus is the residents of Amity Island being safe from a killer shark, but he's also in way over his head getting on that boat. This is all perfectly represented in the drinking scene. The first moment of Hooper and Quint bonding comes from them comparing scars they have received in their life. Hooper mainly sticks to scars he's gotten in his career in marine research. Quint mostly gives examples of manly things such as bar fights and arm wrestling. When Brody has an opportunity to join the drunken comparing of life experiences, he chooses to hide it just in case he's ridiculed. Despite all that bonding, it then turns to shit once the shark proves to be more than they were all anticipating. And then their toxic personalities begin clashing again. Fun to watch, but no one would ever want to be on that boat with them. Now, picture that dynamic in a reboot. Will they keep this dynamic or will they alter the story to be more diverse and progressive? Back then when you couldn't show the shark, you needed compelling characters in its place. But nowadays you don't need that. I can just picture The Rock playing Brody. He will still be a gigantic ripped ex-military ex-cop from New York, but they will keep the fear of the water thing. Even though he would make sense fighting the shark with his bare hands, Hooper will be that character that they gender race swap and will become more of the comic relief and will make way too many jokes. I'll probably just be played by Kevin Hart. And I think Quint will be prime territory to put in the most one-dimensional 
political villain. Just Trump with sideburns. When he made some sexist jokes at the start of the film, now he'll be homophobe, transphobe, ET phobe home. And right before he dies, he'll say something sexist or racist, and then the audience will cheer when the shark eats him, which won't be drawn out and horrific. He'll be eaten in like three seconds because, you know, CGI makes things faster. Another thing going against this reboot is Spielberg wouldn't be able to make it good regardless if he's a producer or even returns as a director. For all intents and purposes, Jaws is a horror movie, a violent and gory one. This was a perfect trait for Spielberg's filmmaking in his early career. But as his career has gone on, He's grown as a father, a grandparent. He's now settled into making fluffy kids films or movies made for old people. The violence in the original Indiana Jones and Jurassic Park have all been cleaned up and made safe for kiddies in the franchise's most recent entries. But one thing that was to Jaws' benefit was as violent as it was, it still got a PG rating. This is due to the fact that the violence depicted by a shark can't be replicated by humans. Humans can't just jump in the water and start eating people because they saw it in Jaws. That's a dumb example, but that's also the truth. Nevertheless, Spielberg returning as director would be nothing short of bad news. As all the points I've discussed before, he's too squeaky clean and safe now. I would hate to see him try to recapture that type of horror he started his career off with. Now that he's so addicted to overusing CGI, trying not to offend anyone, making it more family friendly, and overall just exploiting nostalgia. And I would hate to see him not want to make it, but force himself to just because of fan demand. Terminator Dark Fate sucks, but not because James Cameron was involved. It sucks because James Cameron Cameron is now in Avatar world, where he can stay. That's his thing, that's fine. But unfortunately, he has that, oh, you gotta love the fans attitude. You can tell that ever since T2 rocked the planet, he would just be told for the rest of his life, we want more Terminator. And when he got the rights back and should have done nothing with them, well, you gotta love the fans. They just want more and more Terminator, don't they? Ah, let's give them exactly what they're demanding. And then you get pointless rehashing for five movies. I fear that's what Spielberg's Jaws reboot would be. Gotta love the fans, so we gotta put in the dun 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 dun. Gotta put in the boat, gotta put in the barrels, but we'll put in some dolphins so the kiddies can enjoy it, and we'll make the characters on the boat teenagers. Everyone will be pleased. Which brings me to my final point. And this is the ultimate problem. There will never be a reboot of Jaws that pleases anyone. Jaws is one of those cases where it was made at the right time with the right people. On top of all the effects of the shark itself, the movie was ultimately built on the ambition of a young Spielberg and most of the performances overall being ad-libbed and developed by amazing, talented actors. Regardless of the shark, Jaws remains as one of the most naturally acted movies of all time. It has so many themes going on other than horror. But to tell the story again after how much the world has changed, changed since 1975, it can't be the same story. Jaws represented more than just a mindless popcorn creature feature. It's an incredibly detailed story with a lot of mature themes, and I think that's why it's remained such an untouchable titan of a film. Remaking this would be like remaking A Clockwork Orange, or One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest. It was made at the right time. And if there are people who want a Jaws remake, people that wouldn't understand any of the points I just made, well it's clear what type of movie they would want, and all they want is the Meg with the Jaws theme in it. Everyone wanted a Megalodon movie, but they probably wanted some something more serious like Jurassic Park or even the original Jaws. But what you got was shit CGI, dumb characters, and pandering to China. I got that DJ! <laughs> That's not funny, man! No, like seriously, it's funny. Look, watch this. <laughs> we got the wall in the water. We got the wall in the water. But if they slapped the Jaws name on it and had the John Williams score, it would have an extra 1% on its critics rating. Now, the only new Jaws movie that you could make, and this isn't even my idea, is in the first Jaws. The whole USS Indianapolis story as told by Quint. A story so haunting and messed up, but on top of that, a true story. I would be all for a Jaws USS Indianapolis movie. You get to see a way more intense story than Jaws. You get to set it in a time where marine technology isn't as advanced as it is today. You can cast a young Quint. It could also be an amazing horror film. But that's my thoughts on why Jaws shouldn't be remade. Let us know what you think in the comments. Anyways, thanks for watching.